Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Embroidery Insider Podcast. In this episode, we have a special guest, Linda Russell, who is one of our longtime customers, and she's been doing sewing and embroidery for many, many years. Wanted to bring her onto the show and share some of her experiences with you guys and pick her brain a bit on how she got into this business and the success that she's had in this business. So we'll kind of jump right in. Hey, Linda, how's everything going? Good, Henry. How you doing? Good, good. Thank you so much for joining us uh, on this podcast today. I know it was, it was on short notice, but thank you so much for joining us. Um, maybe for the benefit of the audience, I know I gave a short intro there, um, but for those that don't know you, maybe just uh, give a brief intro about uh, you know who you are, what you do, and kind of your overall experience getting into the embroidery world, how you got started at all. Oh, let's see. I've been sewing since I'm a little girl, and that's going over 50 years ago. Um, uh, started embroidering probably about 25 years ago, maybe closer to 30 now, uh, on a little single brother, single, single needle, teen, uh-huh. sewing and embroidery, uh, didn't know that I was going to like it, didn't know if I wanted it, but when I was in the store looking at machines, it was there and I got sold. Uh-huh. <laughs> And I just like doing it. I like I like the outcome. I like what it looks like. Uh, it's not hard to do. Mm-hmm. It just went right in with the sewing and and making things look pretty. Now that that that's interesting because a, a lot of um, our customers or people that I've interacted with uh, in this industry, they've all always started out uh, as a hobby. What what made you transition from a hobby into wanting to do this as a as a business? Well, I uh, post pictures of what I do and, and people like it and they're willing to pay for it. And as long as they're willing to pay for Why it. Why not, I'm right? It. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fun. I like doing it. Okay, great. Something that I want to uh, eventually retire with in a few okay. years. Uh, you know, stop the, the 8 to 5 Monday through Friday job uh-huh. and stay home and, and work. Right, and and I think that's a that's an inspiration for a lot of people because uh, you know a, a lot of our cu- our customers or people looking to get started in embroidery, they start out uh, doing this part time, kind of like what you're doing now, but eventually have a plan down the road to want to do this on a full time basis and set up you know their their re- retirement plan uh, do- doing this, and um, part of that is to kind of mitigate the the risk uh, up front, um, but but t- tell us tell us a bit about kind of the experience you've had just posting these uh, pictures on social media and then friends and family just wanting to to get to get this because um because the the in the embroidery world a lot of people struggle with getting those customers right a lot of people ask about hey if i jump into this how, how do i get those customers so if you could share your experience on how you got those and then kind of took took that uh and kept and kept the ball rolling to get to where you are now well i have friends and they like what i've done uh, so they'll refer me to other people. I've got um, I've got a couple of restaurants. I have okay a, a little league team. I have a couple of model railroad clubs. Okay, uh, <laughs> that's right. Okay, and so there's you know with all of those people, there's you know over a hundred people that mm. have seen my work. Okay, you know personally, and they like it. They you know that old thing you know they tell two friends and they tell two friends. Okay. It just it just built the 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 word just just kind of spread. So leveraging the networks and the groups that you are currently in, and see if there's 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 demand for 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 embroidered goods. Right. My husband has a, an auto repair shop, so he's got his customers. Ah, uh, okay. You know, come in and they want something done on their car. They want something done for their jackets, their their hats, mm-hmm. and it just you know whatever they want to do, we can do it. Right, right. So yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize that starting out, you can just tap into the network that that you, that you already have. Most people think, oh, I don't know anybody that needs embroidery. But if you kind of just like think about it and look around, you probably have one or two or three different places that that would need that, and then you kind of build that relationship and then keep going, right? Exactly. Awesome, awesome. Um, and tell us about kind of the transition from a uh, from a hobby to a, to a business. Was that was that difficult? Um, you know, the do, doing this part time. I, I know that you mentioned uh, to to me before that uh, you have to uh, do this at night because of of your nine to five job, right? So um, t- t- tell us about how that experience is, and is it difficult having to fulfill those orders in a timely manner and meeting the demands of the customers? It is a little. Uh 
challenging. Uh-huh. Uh, I get home from work at six o'clock, have to make dinner, have to do the normal, you know, cleaning right. and, and stuff. Uh, yeah. I start on embroidery uh, at, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night and work for a couple of hours. And it's, it gets, you know, it, it's challenging, but we're mm-hmm. doing it. You know, it, mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot of fun and a uh, little lack of sleep every once in a while, but right. <laughs> we get it done. <laughs> And the customer's right. happy, and that's you know, right. And then they, they they come back exactly, exactly. And and does your husband Raid uh ha- you know help you with some of the digitizing, the designing? <laughs> yes, he's he's yes. a big help. He he he's my maintenance guy. He takes care of the machine for me. Awesome. He does. He's learning <laughs> the digitizing. <laughs> okay. So we're we're he's he's getting pretty good at that. Um. And he, he encourages and, and helps and That's always good. To, to get it going. He gets the customers in and Okay. He gets uh things delivered and, and paid for and Okay. Awesome. That's that's always good. That's always good. Good team together. Awesome, awesome. And um, you know, one of the interesting kind of um focuses or, or, or niche that, that, that you focus on is uh freestanding lace, right? And 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 that's something that a, a, a lot of people talk about and it's very fascinating to to uh, see um you know doing freestanding lace, making a 3D object uh come to life with with with, with uh threads. So um tell us a, a bit about that, how you how you even kind of come to discover that um and what are some tips that you can give people that are looking to do that? Well, there again, it's social media. I found a, a, a website, um, Facebook page that I buy my designs from. And she's very good at designing and I love what she's done. And her designs are, are perfect and her instructions are excellent. Uh-huh. And I never knew about it before, before then. And just after I got this machine is when I found her site. Like, okay. No, I could do that. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's a lot of fun. And to see something sewn out flat on wash away stabilizer, mm-hmm. sewed out flat, and you wash away the stabilizer, and you're left with thread that you put together to make something three dimensional or yeah. something that's just thread. It's 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 amazing to see. Right, I've even seen some pictures of maybe like you can have like a lantern or something that's uh, that's made out of freestanding lace, right? Well, I have this angel. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I can th- definitely see it. Flat, and then it's there. It's all put together um, with sewing and glue. Okay, so th- there there is some sewing involved to to put everything together. Yeah, a little bit, not a lot. I mean, okay, um, like on here. The sides of the skirt, because it's in two pieces, has to be sewn together. I see. I see. Okay. It's hand sewn. It's 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 easy to do. Okay. Then other parts of it are just all all glued together. Like her her wings are glued together. Okay. The skirt uh, is is glued together on on this side, uh, and it's it's just, it, you know, I like it. Yeah. Awesome. And then is that like met- metallic thread on the on the? I, I use metallic thread on there. Okay. Did a little bit on on her necklace, and I put a um, a rhinestone. Oh, nice. On the front of it, I've done other ones where I've changed the hair color, and I've I've made the crown, you know, in okay. the metallic. Uh, I've given her more facial features, like there's eyes and and a mouth on here that I've mm-hmm. changed the colors on. Um, this was actually the first one that I did, so it's all. By the instructions. Okay. Without any variations. Okay. Um, but so so the so the the, the uh, freestanding lace designs they would come with the instructions on how to how to do them. How and and how long would a typical like that angel? How how long would that take to do? Um, the angel the 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 pattern sewed out in probably I would say an hour. Okay. And to put her all together took about 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Not long at all. Okay. So it, it's it's real quick, and I mean, I I can sell them for forty five dollars. So we're talking an hour, fifteen minutes time. Uh-huh. Minimal in supplies. I mean, washer, mm-hmm. stabilizer, and some thread. Right. So it's a it's a pretty good profit on on those. Yeah, I would I, I would imagine. 
I would imagine. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Now, um, speaking of kind of fun, fun projects, what are other fun projects that, that you consider uh, that were very creative to to, to embroider, or uh, maybe on the on the flip side, that are very hard to embroider that that you have encountered in your experience? I don't think I've gotten anything that's hard, other than learning how to do the hats. Okay. <laughs> it's a long time to. Uh... Yeah, hats. Hats will. Mm-hmm. Okay. Once I got the hang of it, I mean, they're, they're not hard to do at all. Okay. Uh, I've, I've done quite a few of them, and you get into that routine. The right. Hooping and running and hooping and... <laughs> right, right, exactly. It gets pretty easy. Um, I, I do a lot of reading pillows. Okay. Uh, the, it's a, a pillow that you embroider on a pocket, and you sew it together, and then you can put the book inside the pocket. Oh, wow, okay. And and are those um, custom ordered, or you kind of make them with it with it with a design, and then you sell it? I the ones that I've made are all custom because I okay. um, put their the most of them are for kids, so I put the kids' names on them. I see. Personalize okay. them so that they're for them. Okay. I don't have any in here at the moment. Uh, the toilet paper is kind of fun to do. Oh yes, that's right. <laughs> To- toilet paper, yeah. I-, I think a lot of people use those as like uh, uh, gag gifts, and then yeah, yeah, holiday decoration. Right. You put it in your bathroom for Christmas, or you know, and uh, even like for um, in the bathroom at wedding receptions or bridal showers or uh, baby showers. Mm-hmm. It's all it's all fun stuff. Okay. Awesome, awesome. You, you, do, you, do you ever do any like back, uh, backpacks or bags given that you know you have the MT and it has that clearance area to do bulkier items? I have not yet. Okay, but so, so, something. I've done um, just little tote bags, but nothing. Oh, tote bags, okay. And big. I've done a couple of uh, Carhartt jackets. Uh, okay, those, those, are, those are especially, yeah, you're, you're, you're up north, so the, they're, it's cold and people, people like to buy those, yeah. Yeah, those are uh, pretty pretty heavy and thick material. They are heavy and they are thick. Yeah, so mm-hmm. my my mighty hoops come in very handy with those. Yes, <laughs> definitely, definitely, Wor- definitely worth every penny. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely, yes. They save the fingers a lot. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Well, you got you gotta be you gotta be careful uh, when you put it on. But yes. <laughs> yeah. If you don't if you, uh, don't don't pinch your fingers. But yes, those uh those are a lifesaver when it comes to hooping heavier items and also uh, um if you just want to hoop on on a consistent basis for uh, like a large run that you're doing for like le- uh, just simple left chest polos or something. Yes, I have um, a few customers that uh, send me their scrubs. Oh, uh, okay. So it makes it a lot easier to do the the uh, you know the scrubs or uh, one of the the train clubs that I did they ordered I don't know like thirty polo shirts okay or denim shirts and it was easy to get them all in the same place quickly okay in fact I right. have two of the two of the smaller ones for doing the 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 uh, left chest okay I actually have two of these and borrowed one. So that I was constantly <laughs> going, so that it was it was real quick to, okay. to get them all done. Okay. Do do you do you find yourself kind of taking on more orders that are personalized, meaning like they have different names, or is it more bulk orders of like the same logo for like a company? Uh, a couple of them are the same logo, and there are some that are personalized, so that it's you know you do the logo on the one side and their name on the other side. Yeah, those t- tend to take longer. It's uh, it's not bad, not bad. Okay. okay. I've done uh, aprons okay. that are personalized. Uh, uh, I've got a customer now that's uh, I'm doing chef jackets for, so it's. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, that's like you. You've definitely ventured into I think more variety of things than than most people. It's, you know, there's a big variety. Right. Yeah. It, it's it's all it's different media's as well. So it's, okay. You know, it's some some of it is embroidery with vinyl. Okay. Because it's some thing, some things are just too big to do all embroidery. Right. Or not enough. Um, yeah, it's just too big to do embroidery. Yeah, and it's 
Right, right, and it takes takes too, too much time, and it, it ups the cost and the time. Um, so yeah, maybe uh, talk a little bit about that. What are some other kind of multimedia things that you that you've done? Do you do any like um, rhinestones or you know sublimation? Okay, uh, I do the vinyl, the heat transfer. We do um, sign vinyl. Okay. Um, we've got a, a, a school bus company that we do the, the vinyl, you know, the, the, their names on the sides of the buses. Okay. And we do some big stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we do little stuff. So, I mean, we, we've got the means to do all of it, mm -hmm. except, um, the only thing that I haven't done is the DGT. Okay. The, the, the director garment. Okay. Okay. And uh, I don't do screen printing, but I send out transfers for screen printing. Okay, I see. Okay, what are what are the typical size of the orders that that you get in terms of in terms of quantity? Are they you know like a dozen, two dozen, or sometimes depending on the company, it could be uh, in in the hundreds. Yeah, I mean it could be. Uh, I haven't done a hundred yet, but I've gotten up to maybe fifty polo shirts or uh, okay, um, denim shirts. I think I've done like I think their order was something like uh, twenty five of each one, uh, along with another uh, twenty five hats. Uh, okay, okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, because um, actually, kind of bundling those things or or letting your customers know that hey, if you get a polo shirt, you can also get a cap that goes along with it. Kind of a suite of uh, of products with your logo on it. Uh, definitely that. The, Exactly, definitely a, a better from a from a branding uh, uh, purpose, and it increases your your um, order size uh, in 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 one go. Definitely. Um, you know, on the on the flip side, t talk a little bit about any clients that that you, that um or or situations that you've come across where it's like a really tight deadline, and 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 how have you really dealt with those? Because I've seen in a lot of embroidery groups, people ask in certain situations. It's like, oh, hey, I have a um, client that's asking for for a particular item that's just not doable, and it's you know uh, due the due the next day. How do you manage those expectations? with those clients and, and and what is your general t um policy on t turnaround time i get to it when i get to it and if they have a certain deadline then it's either i accept the order or i don't okay so you definitely know b beforehand whether you can do it or not yeah i can do this but i can't do this tomorrow okay <laughs> i can do this i can do it next week or give me two weeks and i can get it done okay if we're looking for a hundred polo shirts tomorrow it ain't happening you know, unless they have the shirts and they're willing to wait and, you know, the price isn't going to change because they have their own shirts because, you know, mistakes happen and right, right. buying them. <laughs> right, right. Now, the... Um uh, uh, speaking of, about that, I think I think a lot of it has to do with just managing the expectations up front, right? Because a lot of people run into issues where it's like, yeah, I got it, I got myself into this situation, maybe um, by overtaking or like taking it on too much, and then not knowing that the um, job is not going to be done on time. So just managing that that expectation beforehand, before you accept the order, and just communicating that to the to the client, I think that itself kind of uh, takes care of. Um, a lot of the communication errors and and pit and pitfalls that can happen along the way. They think that all you have to do is push a button and it does it all by itself. But it right it takes does it, it does do it all by itself once you get to that point. Right, right. Digitizing, you've got the um, designing or designing digitizing. Then you've got to order the supplies, or if you don't have them on hand, then you've got to. Uh, put the design in the machine. You've got to make sure that the machine is running properly. You got to test right. it. You got to uh, thread it. You have to, you know, tell the machine what to do. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a hoop and and all that stuff. So it's not just pushing a button and letting it go. Right, right, right. Many customers, uh, you know, not knowing embroidery, they don't know the kind of uh, behind the scenes work that go into kind of manufacturing, essentially manufacturing a, a product, right? You, you give them your price, it's like, oh, well, I can get that done online for like $5. Is it, well, then go online and get it done for $5. <laughs> right, right. Five dollars. Right, right. You never want to want to underprice yourself, especially in a uh, in, in this industry where where the time is money, right? So the time that you uh, input in to the work and, and making it look nice, 
um, that essentially translates into you know what your time is worth. So so definitely want to price price accordingly. Um, now, do do your customers uh, typically do do you, do you typically take on orders where uh, the, the blanks are provi are provided by the customer, or do you order them, or or how do they pick out what what they want if they don't have the blank um, blank polo or blank garment? Most of the time, uh, I've got one customer that provides their there's actually two customers. Okay. Scrubs. They provide their own scrubs because okay. they're scrubs. Um, and the one of the restaurants, they provide their own um, jackets. Okay. Uh, but other than that? A lot of times I will give the customer a choice of, of this shirt or this shirt. Okay. Tell me that they want a polo shirt. They want it to be 100% cotton. They want it to be a certain color. Okay see what what's available in that color in that shirt and say this is what i have you've got this choice you've got this choice mm, okay and and then they go with that um other times it's just you know uh, the little league team they wanted a certain brand shirt in a certain color and i ordered that shirt in that color okay Got it. So mo most times, I, I would imagine uh, clients um, that are that are coming to you, they don't really know kind of what what they want or anything. So you kind of give them those just you know two simple choices, two or three simple simple choices for them to choose from. If it's a if it's a company like the little league or the okay club or the the restaurants, they know what they want. Okay. If it's your next door neighbor, you know, or right. Those, those, they don't know what they want. They, okay. they have an idea of what they want, but they don't know. So you give All them right. a choice of, you know, two or three things that you can get that meets what they think they want. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. So you kind of uh, do the groundwork for them and do the research. You have to lead them into what, what they want. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, I kind of want to... Uh, you know, end end things with with uh, with talking a little bit about kind of how you found uh, success in this industry and how you um, translate that into kind of one advice that you would give to to embroiderers that are looking to get started in this. What's the one thing that maybe you wish you 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 knew or that you would uh, pass on as as very valuable um, insight to embroiderers that are looking to get started in this business in order to be as successful as you are. Oh boy! Um, buy bigger than you think you need. Okay, <laughs> okay. And and what 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 do you mean by that? I have a single head machine, mm -hmm. and if I knew where I was going, you know, two years ago or three years ago, I think I mm -hmm. would have probably gone for a bigger machine. Okay. Uh, two heads, maybe. Okay. Uh, to have more of that flexibility in, in in volume. More more flexibility, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm. I am looking to get a, another machine, but it's like the addition on that has to go on the house first. Right. <laughs> you gotta find the space to put it first. That's a that's a good problem to have, huh? Yeah. Right now, I'm in. We've got a three bedroom house, and I'm in three bedrooms. Oh, I see. <laughs> you turn it into a into a shop. <laughs> Pretty much. So yeah. we're, we're looking to to put the addition on hopefully the spring or summer. Okay. Get everything out of the house and into a dedicated space. Uh, so it, 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 it's, I think I would have planned a little bit better. Okay. Uh, if I knew. Right. If you knew that it would take off like this. Did, did you ever expect it to take off the, the, the way that it did? Not as fast. Okay. Not as fast as it did. Um, not getting into as many things as we've, we've done. Like I said, we're a one-stop shop, so we, we have the heat presses and we have the vinyl cutters and we have the embroidery machines and right. sewing machines. So it's, it's all, you know, everything all at once. And okay. it, it, I probably should have planned it out a little bit slower. Okay. But I mean, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a good problem to have. And, and probably it's, you're well on your track to, to retire and do this on a full-time basis. Yes. And I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Awesome. Yeah, I think that that's that's one of the uh, things that I hear a lot about as well. People um, trading in their machine probably you know two three months uh, after they got their first one because now they're staying up till like three a.m. in the morning trying to get things done on a, on a single head machine. 
Hey, it's a it's a great problem to have, but um, I think that's that's one piece of insight that's that's uh, that's very that's very helpful. Like plan, definitely plan ahead, and you know most people think that oh, what if I don't get the business? But I think if you put in the work and you use the proper uh, way to like get yourself out there and and let your friends and your network know the kind of the the snowball kind of rolls and then it, it builds and and the next thing you know you're staying up till three trying to trying to fill orders especially if you're doing this on a on a part-time basis right so awesome and having a good company to work with is mm -hmm. paramount because without the support that i get from you mm -hmm. i could never have done it mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> it, it, I definitely, I definitely appreciate you saying that. But yeah, I think the ha having the proper guidance, having the proper support, and the and the training, um, exactly. Service and an awesome machine. It just, it's just, it, it's a, it's the thing that has made me successful. Right, and you know that we're we're always here to to support you and to back you up. So you know anything anything that that you need, uh, you, you know that we're just a call away, and 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 that's why it's uh, it's it's helpful. Just even if you don't call us, knowing that 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 reassurance in the back of your mind that that we're there. Mm -hmm. um, and doing this at night and on weekends, mm -hmm. and knowing that there's somebody there yeah. to help me if I needed it, is 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 great because there has been a couple of times where i've had to call at nine o'clock at night during the mm -hmm. week and i can get somebody on the phone right. or it's a sunday afternoon and i can get somebody on the phone and right. well it hasn't happened often it has mm -hmm. happened and it's going to i'm you know there's no doubt about that all right you're going to be rushing out an order on the weekend for a client and, and then you have a question you know and just want someone live to, to talk to right and we've, we've had that, and mm -hmm. you don't get that with any other company as far as I'm concerned. You, don't, you just awesome. don't get it. Great, great. Awesome. Well, um, thank you so much, Linda, for, for um, joining us. I know that um, it's uh, definitely very insightful for our audience to kind of hear about your success story and how you got uh, to where you are, and especially kind of what your plans are in the, in the future, you know, turning this into a, a sustainable and viable full-time business after you, you, you quit your, your nine-to-five job. Like, I think that's a very um, in inspiring goal, and I think uh, you're well on your way to do that um, just based on how how, how much you've grown and the variety of things you're able to offer to your clients because nowadays it's a it is truly a one-stop shop experience yeah and and having all those um decoration techniques that you can offer to your clients it just makes them more confident to to do business with you rather than you know doing this here and then getting something else somewhere else they're looking for that one-stop shop experience and i think you've really got that thank you Awesome. So uh, thank you, Linda. We'll uh, look forward to seeing you maybe at the next trade show or something. Yeah. Yes, I can't okay. wait. All right. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. So I hope you guys found this interview with Linda Russell helpful. Make sure to like, subscribe, and rate this podcast if you want to stay up to date with the newest episodes. I hope to see you guys next time.